everyone, my name is Emily Tsai and I'm the Principal Oboist and the Director of Video Projects for the Garden State Philharmonic. This video will be a crash course on how to create home music video and audio content. Obviously, you could invest in a lot of expensive equipment like condenser mics, high quality video cameras, and movie production lighting, not to mention the computer software you'll need in post-production editing. But you can also make great videos with the tools you might already have at home or are super easy and affordable to purchase. For my video camera, I've just been using my smartphone, and most smartphones these days have pretty amazing video quality, as long as you have good lighting. I would recommend getting a ring light. These are great for videos like this, where you need to speak a little more close range to the camera. Whether you have a ring light or not, just make sure to turn on all the lights in the room, and if possible, have some extra lamps that brighten you up. The picture clarity of your video will be much better if you have adequate lighting. Unless you have a specific shot in mind, I would recommend always shooting video in landscape mode and not portrait mode. The wider landscape shot will give you a full screen picture when you view it on your computer and it allows a lot more options when it comes to cropping your video if needed in editing. Your background is important to the feel of the video. You definitely don't want a messy backdrop that distracts viewers away from your beautiful music making. Instead, make sure your surroundings are simple, clean, and if you want, add an artistic touch to the scene. Finally, before you start recording, always make sure you check to see if your shot is centered so it captures all of you and your instrument. You never want to record for hours only to find that your video was off-centered and then have to do it all over again. Some of you might already have a great audio recording setup, but for those of you who don't, I would recommend that you get a USB microphone at the very least. These are pretty affordable and plug right into your computer, so they're super easy to use. I found that my iPhone unfortunately does not record oboe very well. In fact, a lot of recording devices don't record oboe well, and that just might be the nature of my instrument. When I record, I use a condenser microphone that connects to an audio interface, which then plugs into my computer. But a USB microphone definitely does the trick and is way better than just using your smartphone or computer to record. There are many audio recording programs you can download for free, like Audacity and GarageBand. I'll use Audacity as an example. When I have my microphone connected to my computer and open Audacity, I need to switch the audio input to my microphone instead of the built-in microphone my computer uses by default. Then I can record straight onto my computer using my microphone. Just like for your video, always test your sound before you record your entire segment. You definitely don't want to record for an hour only to find out that you were too loud or too soft and then have to do the whole thing over again. Once you've recorded everything, you can now edit your audio and video to your heart's desire. Audio editing can be done in the audio recording software you've already downloaded, and video editing can be done on free video editing programs like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. Unless you're recording an unaccompanied solo piece, you'll probably need to use a click track to help you play together with yourself if you're playing multiple parts and or with other musicians who are recording separately. You can purchase music writing programs such as Finale or Sibelius, but there are also free music writing programs like MuseScore that work just as well. Creating a click track is pretty simple. I'll take you through the steps on MuseScore. First, click Create a New Score. Fill in the title, composer, and any other information you'd like to include. Then choose two instruments. A low sounding instrument like a bass, tuba, or bassoon. And then a drum set. Choose your opening key signature and time signature, the number of measures your piece is, plus an extra four or eight measures and the tempo. The extra four or eight measures are to prep you and your colleagues so you know when to start playing. In this example, I'll put in eight prep measures because it's in cut time and a pretty quick piece. 
Map out your time signature changes if there are any. Then in the drum set line, use a side stick sound for every beat. On the downbeat of the fifth prep measure, I'm changing the side stick to a hi-hat sound. When you're recording, use this beat to snap, clap, or play a staccato note on your instrument. This makes it easier to line up all the different tracks and videos when you're putting them together in post-production. If you have four prep measures for slower pieces, instead of the eight that I have here, you put this hi-hat sound on the downbeat of the third measure. For the low sounding instrument line, like the bass, tuba, or bassoon line, you can put a drone so that everyone playing along with the track will be able to play in tune. Better brush up on those music theory skills. With your click track complete, you can now save your file as an MP3 or WAV file so you can share it with your collaborators. Now you have all the components ready to record a video. Your video camera, lighting, microphone, computer, and headphones so you can hear your click track without it being recorded into your microphone. Now it's lights, camera, action.